love to do package tour trips. And when you're in a foreign country and distances are far and you don't have a car, you too are forced to do such trips. So I'm going to be the only non-Korean on this tour. I'm going to be speaking entirely in Korean. We're going to be going to entirely Korean sites. So I'm going to get a first-hand glimpse of the native environment. Not doctored up, not sugar-coated. The Korean Peninsula miniature is behind me. It took the cooperation of three countries and 25,000 workers to construct that. China had to sign a waiver, North Korea had to sign a waiver, waiving their rights to sue if their countries were depicted in miniature behind us. 3,000 people died moving the dirt and the grass and fashioning it exactly like the Korean Peninsula. It's now it's a money saver. I don't have to go to China. I just cross that little miniature river. I don't have to go to North Korea. I just have to walk across the grass, and I'm in North Korea. They say, too, the sites of North Korea and China are also miniaturized in that location. <laughs> Tang Zhang, well, former king, lived here 28 years, exiled here. He was overthrown. He was also an unruly sort of guy. He criticized his uh, mom's cooking. Nobody really liked the guy. Get out, stay out. Moved him over to this island wasn't really the kind of exile that say Napoleon endured. You could see civilization just over there. And people waved at him, taunted him. See, look, look at the movie we're going to. Look at the feast we're having. He could see them from here, just over their side, smiling and smirking while he was exiled over here and had to eat Korean rice porridge every day. But he had some spacious digs. And once in a while, they saw over a contingent of women where he got to enjoy himself on a female buffet. Not bad for exile. And it's funny how times have changed. Today, people would pay big bucks to stay in a place like that. Back then, the poor guy was exiled here. Today, if he exiled somebody here, he'd say, thank you, great, here's $100 a night. When humans get to be about, I don't know, 60, 65, that's when we start using canes. Trees, on the other hand, are, can be a bit older before they need support. That tree behind me, estimated to be 600 years old. When it was about 575, it started showing rheumatoid arthritis in the trunk and they had to set up a cane of sorts to support the back end of the tree. King Donjong used to meditate under the tree. After you've been exiled for a while, you get old. I mean, time doesn't stand still. You get old and you die. When you die, you got two choices. You can be buried on the island you were exiled on, or if they're gonna give you the uh, red carpet treatment, they move you back to the mainland to apologize. Hey, we exiled you, but hey, you're welcome back when you're dead. And what they did is King Donjong got a mount. Stuffed with chocolates, ice cream sundaes, stuffed animals, and his body. Don Zhang was exiled to the Cape, the site we saw previously for 28 years. That was it. That was you got two. Either got in prison for 14 years, 28 years, or 42 years. He got the middle package. Lucky for him, it flooded there, or perhaps it was not so lucky because once it flooded, his body was moved here. He hid in the hills, but he didn't hide well enough. The king found him. Sit here, have a milkshake filled with poison. And there was a gun in his head. Drink it or don't drink it. But if you don't drink, I'm gonna shoot. Guy drank it, died. Tan Zhang's up, it's over, his life is history. And the king said, if anybody dares recover that body and give him proper burial rituals, we are gonna cut off your head, your testicles, and if you have any daughters, we are gonna rape and pillage the villages where their family came from and defile their bodies. So no one did, but one guy, James, Jimmy as they had known for short, came out of hiding, rescued the body, and then fled town. And today, he got himself a memorial. Peace ran out in 1984. You're a hero. Then overnight, you're a villain. Then you rescue someone's body, you're a hero again, right? You're at war with this country, tomorrow you're at war with that country. They're your friend, now your enemy. You can't keep it straight, double think. Korea was practicing that 600 years ago. In the 1960s and 1970s, it was as far back in time for the Koreans as it was for everyone else. But in terms of development, it was an eternity for the Koreans. Back in the 60s and 70s, the Koreans were into mining. Coal miners' daughter ring a bell in West Virginia. Well, they were doing the same thing here in Korea, using old technologies and old school style living techniques. This was one of the Korean mines from that era. They harvested coal mining in a way indigenous to the Korean Peninsula using kimchi, sesame oil, mining extraction techniques only practiced here. Korean mining town from the 1960s. This was the schoolhouse the kids started. Back in the 60s in the U.S., we were listening to the Beatles, we were listening to Hermit's Hermits. These Korean kids were in a schoolhouse heated by fire. Their lunches heated by furnace, the rice piping hot. They had old-style school bags 
reminiscent of communist era. These were made in Korea. And they learned their lessons with an iron fist. The kids didn't listen. The teacher came out with a roller and hit them hard. Listen, learn. Sundal Cliffs outside Young Wall. King Sundal plunged to his death from the top of that cliff. A lover jilted him. What's new? We're all jilted by lovers. But he didn't know how to handle it. This was before the age of psychotherapy. He bit the big one. Just jumped. Unfortunately, he missed the lake and his head hit a rock. Split open. That was the end of his life. Instructions. Step here. The photo will be nice. So I'm going to step right here. And I'm going to take a photo of myself. See? Let me look at it. Terrible.